Hello everyone, welcome to your 23rd C++ Cube game tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and try to make these tutorials even faster because I feel like I'm still taking too much time and they're still too long relative to many other tutorials on the web. The reason for this is mostly because I like to show you guys the thinking process of programming, the planning stages, etc. where I'm not trying to just give you guys a recipe because if you really want to be able to solve all of the problems you'll encounter, then you need to learn the thinking process. But I'm going to try to... Um, give as much thinking process as possible while still making them as short as possible. If I go too fast at any time, please let me know. Okay, so here's our plan sheet. We've um, already implemented the hex class, we implemented the hex board class, and the game class. So naturally, let's go ahead and implement the button class. All right. Um, here's what I have planned for this tutorial. Basically, when the game is first launched, I want this little menu to pop up, this main menu. And it will have a title and two buttons, a play button and a quit it button. So we have to define our own button class. Now the play button, we're going to connect to the game's start method. So when the play is created, the game's start method will be executed. The quit button, we're going to connect to the close method of the queue graphics view. The game is a queue graphics view, remember? So if we call its close method, it will simply exit the program. Okay, let's go ahead and refresh our, or let's think about how we're going to implement the button class. So um, I'm going to make it inherit from QGraphics rect item because it's a rectangle. And I will also give it an internal attribute that houses this text. Um, okay, and then I'm going to have the constructor of my button class require a Q string because I need to know what to put here. So the constructor of the button class will require a Q string describing the text of the button. And now we're gonna I'm gonna mention a new thing. Um, well, not new. We've been working with signals and slots this whole time, but we've never made our own signal. And in this tutorial, we will. We've always used pre-built signals. We've made our own custom slots, but never our own signals. Um, okay. So our button class will have a clicked signal that can be connected to any slot, obviously, just like any signal. Um, and then we also are going to cover two new events, hover enter event and hover leave event. These are pretty self-explanatory. Hover enter event will execute when um, you go like this. So when you move your mouse, uh, when your mouse enters the region of the item, the hover enter event is executed. And when your mouse leaves the region of the item, the hover leave event is executed. We're also going to use the um, it's simply called mouse press event. Mouse press event. We're going to use mouse press event to emit the clicked signal. Okay. So now let's uh, review a little bit about signals and slots because uh, I think that's important. Let me scroll down a little. Okay. So remember that signals and slots are just member functions. A signal can be connected to a one or more slots, and a slot can be connected to one or more signals. So it's not a one-to-one -one connection. It's a many-to-many -many connection. The key point uh, to understand, though, is that whenever a signal is activated, the slot will be executed. So that's the main thing. Now, how do you activate a signal? Well, you use this emit keyword. This emit keyword is not in regular C++. This is a cute feature. So all you do is simply emit and then followed by the name of the signal. So if I do emit clicked, then the clicked signal will be emitted. And then any slots that are connected to that clicked signal will be triggered. Okay, so let's go ahead and start implementing our button class. Create a new um, header file and a source file. We're going to need rect item to inherit from and Q graphics mouse scene uh, mouse event because we're going to use that. Class button will inherit from Q graphics rect item publicly. Okay, we will need a Q string. Um, 
that describes the text of the button. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, we will clearly need a constructor that takes a Q string. We're going to call it name. So it takes a Q string and uh, also an optional parent, Q graphics item, pointer parent equals no. All right, so this is constructors. We just have one. We may have more later. So this is public methods. And specifically, we're going to do events. So we need the mouse press event. OK. And then we need the hover enter event. This will be executed whenever your mouse moves into the region of the item, in this case, the button. Okay, and here's an important thing. Make sure that you pass a QGraphics scene hover event uh, object, not a mouse event. A hover event and a mouse event are different. Okay, so we'll do hover leave event. And again, for the hover leave event, you want to uh, pass in an object of type hover event, not mouse event. Alrighty. Um, so that looks good so far. And now let's make our signal. Because remember, we said that our button class will have a clicked signal. To do that, you simply make a section called signals. And then you define it, declare it rather, like a regular member function. So we'll call it clicked. And the best part is that you don't have to define this function because there's no need. Um, because all the logic of what will happen when it's emitted is handled by the slot that it's connected to. So just declare it and forget about it. Now the important part is we're going to go inside the mouse press event and in response to the mouse being pressed on the button, we're going to emit this signal. And then whatever slots are connected to it will handle the response. So we don't have to worry about it. Okay, let's go ahead and start implementing the uh, constructor. So add definition, include a button. And then let's go ahead and call the Q graphics. Um, let's see. Yes, I forgot. Okay, so let's just go ahead and call the Q graphics rect item. It's a rect item. It's called the parents constructor, so it does all the initializing. Okay, now what do we want to do? The first thing, draw the rect. Okay, so set rect, 0, 0. We're going to make it 200 pixels wide and 50 pixels high. Um, and then we're going to change the color of the rect. So to do that, we use a brush. Um, so let's create a Q brush. Let's make it a solid fill brush. Uh, it's brush.set style, I believe. Um, and then we'll make it QT solid pattern. No. Yes, solid pattern. There we go. That means it's a solid color. And then now let's give it a color. Set color. Uh, QT. We're going to make it a dark cyan. Okay, and now let's set the brush to this brush that we just created. All right, now let's draw the text. Okay, so we have an attribute. We're going to set it equal to a new Q graphics text item. Whenever you want to use a text on a scene, you use a Q graphics text item. And then let's pass in um, the name here. And then let's make sure to make the button the parent of this class. So we'll do um, this. The button will be the parent of the text. So when the button is deleted, so is the text. OK, so we have that done. And now let's set the x and y position of the text. Um, so quickly, let me make a drawing for you guys for that. Um, I'll go ahead and scroll down and do it right here. OK. Colors, I'll change it really quickly. Okay, so here is our button, right? And then 
here is our text. It will be up here originally because items are positioned relative to their parent and the button is the parent of our text. But now we want to move it to the center. So what we want to do is basically um, we want to shift this. So we want to move it halfway uh, past the button and then we want to move half of the text's body back. So that's a very simple thing to do. You just divide this by two and then subtract dividing this by two so it moves backward. And, and you do the same thing for the vertical orientation. And that way you'll have it centered. So I hope that makes sense. I'm not going to spend too much time. Just think about it for a second and it'll make sense to you. Uh, so this is the text and the outside is the button. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I'll make a temporary variable called x position. This will be the x position of the button. We want to make the x position to be the uh, the width of our button. So rec that width, and then we want to divide that by two, so that we go in the middle. Now let's shift it back a little bit. So we subtract text um, bounding rec. Let's say, let me uh, go ahead and include Q graphics text item. So I get some auto completion help here. Okay, so we'll do text. Oh, text. Oh, what's going on? Okay, well, either way, we'll do text bounding rect. Um, this will return the bounding rect. And then we'll do the width of our bounding rect divided by 2. Okay, and then we'll do end y position is equal to um, rect dot height divided by 2 minus text bounding rect dot height divided by 2. Okay, and then we simply uh, just set the position. So we'll do text set position. Uh, to this X position and Y position. Okay, so that'll put the text in the middle of the button. All right, so we're done with that. And now one final critical thing. In order to allow this button to um, respond to hover events, we have to set uh, uh, that member function. So we'll do allow responding to hover events. How do we do that? You simply call set accept hover events and you pass in true. By default, uh, QGraphic items do not accept hover events. So if you want them to be able to respond to hovers, make sure you uh, type in this line of code. Okay, so that looks, um, that's we're done with the constructor and that's a pretty good place to stop because this tutorial is getting a little bit long. So just digest that for a little bit and um, we'll pick up in the next tutorial. Um, I hope I wasn't going too fast. I try to speed up a little bit, but I hope that I'm still explaining my thought process because that is an important part of programming is learning how to think through problems. Thank you for watching. And um, if again, if I was going too fast, please let me know. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.